here we have a first response ambulance. And usually with this one, it's done very low mileage. That's because it's been based in London. It's been owned by some sort of charity. Um, and traditionally I've found, from my experience, they don't do as much work as, say, the NHS frontline ones. This one's a UV modular conversion, so that's essentially back in the day in 2006. That's the company that was making them. This seems to be a pretty good build quality. Uh, this is the final edition before the facelift sprinter, so it's, in my opinion, the better running gear. It's the 2.7 as well, so it's the five cylinder with plenty of power and just known for being super reliable. Um, the other thing that's going for it too is instead of having it's an automatic transmission instead of having the sprint shift it's got the true automatic transmission which i've also found from my experience result is a lot more reliable let's go ahead and key on starts up really well doesn't miss a beat you hear the split charger engaging then giving power to the auxiliary batteries in the back it's still fully commissioned, so things like lights and stuff like that, they're still working. Just go ahead and turn these off. But the cabin everywhere, quite a pleasant place to be. No tears in the seats, just a clean vehicle really. Slight dent in the bonnet there. As examples go though, if you just look at the bottom of the doors, the cab, the sills, it's in a pretty nice state. So here's under the bonnet. And once again, clockwork, running really well. Scuttle panel, no corrosion. Right, I'll go ahead and let you look underneath it. Turn this off now. Ooh. So, the control panel in the rear, Let's put your lights. The extraction fan traditionally only work when the engine's running, that's why you get that noise like that. Diesel heater, it lights up, but I haven't seen any warm air coming out of it. From our experience, it's not the end of the world. We can probably get that going with not a lot of work. Um, so yeah, that's worth noting. Good cupboard space. Just a a box ambulance really. Now, the lift, you'll notice that the arms are out. This is because when it came in, we went through a few of the things on it. And one of the most important things on this vehicle, if it's going to be used as an ambulance, is the lift. Now there's no communication with the controller. We have, however, been doing a little bit of power probing and we have had the lift down we have had the lift back up um, but that is with a power probe and thus with the traditional controller it's not working 
However, it is worth noting that there is some confidence there that the system is working. It's just this controller isn't doing its job properly. So the solution is new parts. It, it could be the brain down there. It could actually be the wiring. It could be the, the controller itself. Um, or indeed, we could make our own separate controller um, and therefore the ramp could be used and it can be used as a fully fledged ambulance again. There will of course be a cost associated with that because there's time and obviously if we're going down the route of making it work as it did from say UV modulus factory, uh, there'll be a cost associated with sourcing the right parts to make that happen. But I'm listing this vehicle because from my experience, people that are looking for a base run for a conversion, they want a low mileage example, they like the box ambulances because of the width, with the automatic transmission and the great condition of the vehicle overall, it still could be purchased as is. So there's no point me putting resources into getting that ramp sorted if one day someone turns in and says, I really like this van, but don't want the lift, I'm gonna get rid of that. So here we are, I'm just listing it as it is and you can let us know what you'd like us to do or if you'd like to take it as it is. But it's a bloody good example. Excuse my French. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, uh, please do get in touch.